so this is a sketch I did in November and it is of uh, David Chusay as Poirot in the episode Dumb Witness where they have a fox terrier named Bob um, but I did these sketches and I was really really happy with how they turned out so I really want to make that into a big piece so yeah I did that and here I just add a simple wash of colour and I have used my my little Jane Austen set and um, I only used uh, three colours so I used Darcy for the suit and the hat and then I used Knightley for a little bit of a, a shade on his face and then um, on the dog and then I used uh, Elizabeth for his shirt and then the ground here. So really embrace the watercolour staining that I can get. Now this is just a regular sketchbook paper um, and now of course I want to do this on watercolour paper but I really want to get in some lively washes we can get it. Now I made this colour specifically because I wanted to get that sort of um, granulation and that you can see that there are many different colours coming through. So that is my goal. I really want to get that. So with that, a little bit of planning, I feel ready to go. So I'm working here on Arteza Expert watercolour paper that is 100% cotton and there is something I've been experimenting um, the last few months actually and so far so good um, and I used a watercolour pencil to draw out my my lines so I, I chose that because I wanted something that would give me lines and would give that sort of illustrated look without being too harsh and uh, so far I'm really liking so this is a uh, iced coffee from Nuvo and you can only get them in in a set I think the watercolor pencils but I really like them the ones I have anyway <laughs> so the first thing I'm starting with is of course just laying down a basic wash um, so getting some ideas of what colors and where the colors are going to be and when I do this I like to use a fairly expressive brush um, and by that I mean I have a brush that I can easily get into a fine tip or get a fine point but also that will spread quite a lot and my favorite brush for this when I'm working on, on, on this size is a quill and it's from Jackson natural hair and I I just love this brush it is a 10 over 0 so it's the smallest a quill that Jackson have um, and I would say it's like a four or five in normal brush sizes, but it holds the point. It holds lots of water. It's just so nice to work with when you're doing this kind of, um, where you want to lay down a fairly big space, but you want to be kind of precise. Um, I think I could do the whole piece with it. Um, apart from like super fine details, but it's a very good brush and there is something I have really been conscious about trying to buy quality supplies so I mean don't get me wrong I get a lot of brushes so <laughs> I just try to spend my money on the like on the expensive stuff where I know I'm going to use quite a lot of it and this brush is definitely one of those so I'm starting out with the uh, the little palette I have made inspired by Jane Austen. It comes with four colors and I'm using um, three of them. So I'm using Darcy, Elizabeth and Knightley for this. Now I do get quite a lot of warm tones from the watercolor pencil that I used to get, uh, that I used the lines for. So I'm using that to my advantage and only a little bit of Darcy here. So when I'm working on the dog, I just want a little bit of shadows so I'm going in with Darcy that is a bit colder and then activating that pencil to to get value and a little bit of color without getting too much color. Now there's a dog wanting to come into the studio. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear he's uh, scratching at the door but he just have to wait. Um, so when I have a first wash down with the basic colors I will go in and add in 
more details and trying to add more values and now and that was Albert dropping his phone so, um, so I'm trying to add more value I want there to be I want the picture to be easy to read from afar um, and I am not that good with clothes so that is something definitely I need to work on to get that to read and to get life in the clothes but yeah I'm just not good at it and I will do the best that I can for now I'm also adding that Darcy again a little bit underneath the feet so like it feels like they are standing on something and I feel like that sort of grounds them that even though we they're just floating there in white space just a little bit of shadow underneath will just make them feel a little bit more anchored now when I looked up references for the fox terrier um, there's a lot the images that I got <laughs> look quite a lot different from the image of Bob in the image uh, in the um, in the episode and I mean that's not that odd really I mean it was filmed quite long ago and the images that I'm looking at is I try to find dogs that are like show dogs because I know that they have been like they have the good proportion they look like that breed should look like but of course Bob is not a show dog he just lives at home um, enjoying his best life with a tennis ball so he doesn't have that sharpness that I think of when I think about fox terriers so I try to be true to Bob in the movie at the same time as I tried to be true to fox terriers <laughs> and I think I did a pretty good job considering uh, all the different um, inputs that I had <laughs> um, I'm taking a little break from the watercolors and I'm going in with some color pencil this is a polychromos in indigo and that is just I want some of the shadows to be a bit more defined like the creases on his pants the lapels around his jacket the shoes that kind of stuff where I know I want that to be darkest and I really enjoy the different textures that you get when you mix watercolor and pencils or pastels or, or whatever I find that very very fun uh, when it comes to his face that is very interesting um, Poirot has a very expressive face and um, I put a lot of time and effort into working on that face um, before I uh, the, like before I drew out this uh, piece so that I knew like what shapes I wanted I knew that I wanted him to sort of smile that funny little smile that he has and have his eyes closed and just having that sort of round shape and also want to make sure that I got that sort of double sh uh, double chin he has because of the way the collar is on his shirt he sort of pushes up I'm trying to show you with my hands um, he, it sort of pushes up the under chin so it looks like he has a really big double chin and I really wanted to show that because that is one of those things that were typical when you were dressed the way he is dressed in the movies or in the episodes so yeah and of course the one thing that is Poirot everything is the moustache and um, I tried to sort of combine the moustache from the episode with the one he has in the beginning because I it, I mean I think all of them look kind of fake but then on the other hand when Poirot when the when the series is taking place in the 30s you wax the mustache and you don't do that now so yeah that is something that's <laughs> a bit odd and I think that is why I have a hard time thinking of his mustaches as real because they look so fake but on the other hand they are supposed to look like that because he waxed them anyway um, the moustache is a big thing so I really wanted to get that right so I tried to keep it sort of small neat and having that sort of upturned ends that is uh, very Poirot in the beginning of the of the series um, 
<laughs> so I'm going to let the base dry before I come back to it and I'm just working on adding some details to uh, around around the face so um, ar around the shirt uh, wanting to get some depth into around the neck and then I can come back here and adding more detail to really make the chin stand out. I don't know why I was so obsessed with the chin. I think it's because uh, when I do faces I don't typically draw people with double chins and I had so much fun that shadow. Yeah it was just... <laughs> it's so odd. I mean I can watch other youtubers and when they talk about their process and they like oh that that line it was so fun to make but yeah it definitely is like that I mean I had a lot of fun with this whole piece but I think my favorite part was uh, Bob's face and Poirot's double chin it was so much fun to draw <laughs> so it's the little things that that makes the whole piece I think anyway so yeah um, one thing that I feel like I could definitely done better here is rendered his right hand a lot better because he's holding his um, walking stick and I really wanted to get that walking stick that he has in the series that one with the silver swan I love swans so I love that walking stick and I feel like I didn't I didn't get that as easy to read and as visible as I had wanted now does that matter I mean no I mean this this image this uh, picture that I have made is about Paro being Paro holding the dog with his pinky <laughs> doesn't really want to hold him um, and I mean that's the image it's not about the walking stick with a swan on it but for me yeah that is something I wish I had uh, paid more attention to earlier on I suppose so I've switched out my brush here and I'm having a pretty small one. This is um, one of the brushes I uh, sell in the shop and I really really like them. They are synthetic and travel brushes which means that you can remove the end part of the brush and then putting that on top of the bristles to protect them while you are traveling. And I really like them because they hold the point really really well. So I'm just going in adding details to to the suit, adding some stripes to his shirt, adding more details to his face, he's getting some eyebrows because you know Poirot has eyebrows. I think it, typically humans as general has eyebrows so. <laughs> so I'm just adding more and more details um, and I'm working now from my from my studio palette so it's a big is a big ceramic plate that I have on um, a wooden thing that spins around which I find is the perfect way for me anyway to keep a watercolor palette in the studio now the I can't move this around uh, or take with me it's way too big but to have it on the desk it is the best thing in the studio I think apart from my light so but yeah, so what I wanted here is to get, uh, amongst other things, I wanted to have a cooler color um, to add a little bit more detail. Now, Darcy is a cool and a pretty pigmented color, but I wanted something that was a little bit closer to black without being black. I find that black can very easily look sort of flat. Um, so yeah, and I'm wanting to add more details here to the jacket. At the same time, I want to keep all of that uh, texture that I've got when I applied the first layer of the watercolor. I intentionally added more water to get some blooming going on and I'm really wanting to keep that as a, as the same time I want to add more texture. So yeah. So here I'm starting on a little bob. He has one layer of like a basic color but now it's time to start on his little face and uh, I think I think this it makes a huge difference starting with just the eyes and the nose and you can see I'm keep looking over my shoulder and that's because I have my sketchbook where I have all these sketches I've done before and I'm keeping that as a reference to know where I'm going um, of course I have the sketch on the paper but when it comes to values and the expression I keep looking at that to see that I'm going in the right direction 
Um, typically I found uh, drawing animals is something that I have been working quite a lot on, but yeah, getting that right expression, it's, uh, it's nice to have a reference, even if that is a reference you have painted yourself, just to know what you're looking for. And for this, it was quite a lot of fur in different directions, you know, around the muscle and around the eyes. And I wanted to make sure I got all of that. But at the same time, it was easy to read. Uh, there was a dog's face, <laughs> so to speak. So yeah, that is something I, I try to keep, like having that reference close at hand when I'm going in with a detailer. And here you can see a little bit closer, uh, adding some details. And um. What I want to do is, as you can see, the first layer of the wash, especially on the body, is quite loose. It's not evenly applied and I really like that effect. I'm really trying to sort of go in that direction because when I see people that can do these kind of things, um, quote unquote, like messily apply a layer, I really like the feeling of that. But I myself have so hard time knowing where to just leave it alone. And uh, there's something I need to try on because I feel there's more expression in a painting when you see those under layers and everything is not perfectly blended out. So that is definitely something I'm working on. Uh, but I'm adding here some fur texture because I still want you to be able to to tell the, um, the sort of colouring that he has and the texture of his fur. And uh, yeah, I mean... Did I went too far? Yeah, m maybe, probably, totally. But you know, the more I'm painting, the more I'm realizing what it is that I want, the more I do it wrong, the more I can do it right. So that is just, yeah, life, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> and he, I think you can really see here, like the fun, funness uh, of the Darcy color both on the uh, on the ground and in the suit and also that very very light on the coat of Bob um, the different tones you can get with the same paint and how even though it looks like really dark muddy brown in the pan how much life that color has on the paper it sort of separates so you get that warm tones but also that sort of blue coming through and um, I think that is one of my favorite colors just for that that you can do so many things with it it, it offers you the uh, to use it as a lot of different values um, without it being just flat so yeah uh, adding some details so we're rendering out his little tail here so you can see that he's happy sitting here next to Poirot uh, even though Poirot might not be the ultimate dog handler <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the reason why I am painting this is, uh, well, for many reasons, really. Uh, I love Poirot, obviously. I mean, um, I think everybody knows that I'm a, I'm a pretty huge Christie fan. Um, but also, I, um, uh, I'm working on a project, a dog project. Uh, well, I say you're working, that's very, very loosely and very optimistic. Um, so in my shop you can see that I have quite a few art prints of different animal collections like sheep, pigs, cows, horses, bunnies and um, I want to have one with the dogs and um, the plan was to have that up in December but I haven't actually started on it. I do have one with the different basset breeds uh, but I want to have one with just a lot of different types of dogs and then I was like mm, yeah what else could I do and then I thought I really like Faro and this fox terrier and then I was like I want to do a whole series of different characters and their dogs in different situations so that is something I, I want to I want to do and uh, yeah this is the first one I'm really happy with the result of it so spoiler but yeah, so right now there is not a lot of time. Well, I mean, I have the same amount of time as, as ever. It's just that the time is uh, having to be prioritized for other things. So yeah, 
but it's really fun. I did this painting a few weeks ago and I'm just now sitting down to edit the video and I think it's really fun to to see the process again and just remembering how much fun it was. And I have so many ideas for these different um, dog-human uh, pairings and yeah, I want to have like a whole a whole parade of them. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm planning on having a little bit more time later on in spring, so maybe I can start it properly then. But for now, here we have Poirot. And I feel like if there should be anybody going out first, it should be Poirot. So yeah. Um, and while I've been shuttering on, I'm back here with my indigo pen to add a bit more contrast. I'm also going in with Pompeii Red. Uh, adding some cheeks or like little blushies and adding some details to his bow tie and also he has this little little vase I think it is with wildflowers on his lapel I'm also adding a pit pastel in burnt ochre to Bob and that is very close to the color but I just want that little bit of extra different texture that I uh, I just really love that and then indigo again so I'm using these pens not to add color precisely but to add a little bit more texture and a little bit more intensity maybe i feel like these illustration it really lends itself to having those different types and it doesn't have to be them outlining everything it's more to just add that little bit of hint of extra concentration of focus sort of so if i want it to be a little bit sharper around the, the band on his hat then I just go in and focus it on that and um, yeah and I chose to go with indigo because I felt like that dark dark blue was a lot better than going in with um, with black because I felt like the black would take over too much now I don't have any other black in this painting so I felt like keeping it with the blue would keep the sort of feeling and the same value a lot better than the black um so yeah the um the last thing i'm going to do is just add a little bit more of darcy around the ground just to give them a little bit more ground to stand on and i have to say i add a little bit too more a little <laughs> I, I added a little bit too much i just should say uh i should have stopped myself about here but anyway <laughs> um so yeah and then the best part is peeling it off so yeah even though we don't really have a background on this piece getting that tape off and getting it off that red background makes such a big difference so um yeah the big reveal here and uh, you could see Albert has been a support all this time. <laughs> so yeah, last piece here is getting ripped off. And here we have the finished piece. So I am so very happy with this. I had so much fun working on the on this piece I felt very inspired and very happy with the result uh, there is a few things that I will keep in mind as I move forward but on the whole I'm, I'm very happy with it so thank you so much for watching I hope you have liked this and um, if you would like to see more just head on over to the channel and see if you find something and um, yeah I hope you have a really good day <laughs>